Today in the news, we got some Zen 3 and other Navi code names. What's up, guys? I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. AMD had their Epic Horizon launch two days ago and boy were their new CPUs impressive. While in the desktop market, Intel still has a little bit of fight left, the server market is now a completely different story. Not only are you getting up to more than double the cores compared to Intel's current top Xeon CPUs, but they are doing this at almost half the price. A 28 core top of the line Intel Xeon Pentium 8280 is around $10,000 compared to $7,000 for the 64 core Epic Roam processors. The best part is if you only need a single socket system, that price drops down to about $4,500. AMD just beat the blue team by such a huge margin that Intel can't really do anything. Sure, Intel has a 56 core Xeon coming up, but what will it be priced at? And maybe more importantly, how much power will it consume given that their last non-socketable 56 core has a TDP of 400 watts, while AMD's 64 core has a TDP of around 220 watts. And all of that is thanks to the Zen 2 architecture and its chiplet design. So what is next? Well, during the presentation, AMD showed no signs of slowing down and announced that it had completed the design phase of its next generation Zen 3 architecture. Not only that, but they are currently working on Zen 4. For the upcoming Zen 3, AMD will stay at 7 nanometers, but will use EUV lithography, which allows for much higher transistor density and better energy efficiency which should translate into higher clock speeds at the same TDP. Now, this is just me speculating, but with AMD's past rollouts being spaced out about uh, a year and a quarter apart, that means Zen 3 will probably make its first appearance mid next year with a release at the end of 2020. If Zen 4 is being worked on right now, it's probably going to be released around late 2021. On the Intel side, their desktop client roadmap shows Comet Lake coming in in Q1 of 2020 and on their client commercial roadmap, we have Rocket Lake S for 2021. Both of those are still at 14 nanometers. So I don't think Intel will have something to compete until at least 2022. The only way they could actually compete is if they have a drastic shift, not only in their core count, I mean, AMD is going all the way up to 16 cores right now, or in pricing. I mean, I wouldn't say no to a 9700K at a $200 price point. Next up, you might have heard about the NVIDIA killer from AMD. This is supposedly the internal name used for Big Navi inside the walls of the company. Little disclaimer here, this information comes from uh, Red Gaming Tech, and while there have been previous successful leaks from the outlet, this is still to be taken with a huge grain of salt. All right, so according to his sources, AMD is planning two new cards, one which is the Navi 21 and the other Navi 23. Navi 23 is the one referred to as the uh, NVIDIA killer. Besides that, the information seems more vague than anything else. He was told that Lisa Su is apparently targeting Nvidia's market leadership because she is growing frustrated for not having an answer to higher end Nvidia SKUs. He was also told that ray tracing is definitely a goal for gaming GPUs, but I mean, we already gathered that much since the PS5 is supposed to support it. And lastly, he isn't sure if Navi 20 or 21 or 23 will pack the next generation of RDNA or not. And since hardware ray tracing is for next-gen RDNA, we don't know if it will appear in this NVIDIA killer GPU. So what are we getting here? What, what's the information in this leak? The only thing I can see is the Navi number and the internal reference of NVIDIA killer. The rest is so vague, it's not really worth discussing any further. So here are my predictions instead. Do I think AMD will have something to compete with the current NVIDIA cards on the high end? Sure. I mean, a lot of people have extrapolated from the 5700 XT's performance, and it seems like if AMD is capable of saturating the 64 compute unit limit of the first gen Navi cards, then we'll have a power hungry but really powerful card. Will AMD beat Nvidia with raw performance? I don't think so. I think we'll see the same thing we saw with the 5700 series, beating Nvidia with value. If AMD can make a 52 to 56 compute unit card in the near future for let's say 550 to $600, it's probably going to compete with the 2080 or 2080 Super. 
As for the 64 compute unit card, it probably won't beat the 2080 Ti, but it also won't cost $1,000 minimum. I expect that the value of Big Navi will be in powerful but reasonably priced cards that will last through Nvidia's next gen if they decide to release something new in the summer of next year. What do you guys think of my predictions? Am I underestimating AMD? Post yours down below so we can come back to it when the time comes. All right, guys, that is pretty much it for the news today. Hopefully you've enjoyed. If you got any questions, leave them down below. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Oh, by the way, uh, if you haven't seen The Boys, I think it's on Prime Video right now, but if you haven't seen it, go check it out. It's amazing. Take care. I think you could see a sweat drip. A drip sweat? A teardrop running down my forehead.